Hi, uh, and uh, welcome everyone to the Q4 2021 update uh, to what's next in OpenShift. Uh, as many of you know, uh, the product team does a what's new and a what's next presentation every quarter or so. Uh, this is the what's next uh, Q4 update. Uh, the what's next offers an overview of the direction, uh, initiatives and exciting new use cases and features over a six to 18 month uh, time horizon. Uh, these are heavily influenced by you, our users, uh, you know, via formal and informal feedback, uh, and also by market drivers and uh, trends. Uh, this is an hour long presentation that covers the overview and motivation for the roadmap that we're going to present to you. Uh, specific details for each of these topics that are covered here uh, can also be found in the appendix, uh, which is a part that we are not going to cover, but uh, you will have access to it, uh, you know, after this presentation and you can uh, use that as a reference. Uh, please note that this is a roadmap and therefore anything that we discuss here uh, um, can change and is subject to change. Uh, and so please bear in mind as you plan um, your uh, next few months and years. With me today, uh, I have a fantastic uh, team of uh, fellow colleagues and product managers from the OpenShift team uh, who will be the speakers. Uh, in addition, uh, we have the rest of the team present also today. Uh, and together, uh, it is the hard work of not just us presenting, but also all of them and also obviously by extension, all the engineers and uh, the other functions uh, that make this happen. So thanks to all of them, uh, you know, uh, obviously, and then uh, you'll see them and uh, you'll hear them all talk today. Uh, just in the way of introduction, I don't think I introduced myself. My name is Tarka Tarki, uh, and one of, I'm one of the OpenShift product managers, uh, you know, and kind of shepherding this presentation. Uh, for the past 10 years or so, uh, you know, we have made the case for the open hybrid cloud, uh, as many of you know. Uh, our customers have innovated, competed, and have succeeded uh, uh, in creating value to, the, to their customers uh, through applications uh, built for the hybrid cloud. Uh, those applications can range from traditional end-tier applications to more modern cloud-native microservices-based applications, uh, encode more traditional business logic or rules, or more modern data analytics and uh, AI and can be for in-house developer applications or packaged applications from ISVs. Uh, no matter what, they have developed and deployed these applications across the hybrid cloud footprint, uh, everything from a physical data center to a public cloud and to the edge. Uh, Red Hat OpenShift built on Red Hat Enterprise Linux has been the bedrock platform in this journey. Um, uh, and that continues to inform our uh, roadmap and our initiatives and our future. Uh, OpenShift, uh, as a quick level set, as you probably already are aware, uh, is a fully managed cloud service uh, or can be consumed as a fully managed cloud service or a self-managed platform. Uh, managed Red Hat OpenShift is jointly engineered and offered uh, by Red Hat with the corresponding cloud providers. Uh, so that you can get started with a Kubernetes service very quickly. Uh, OpenShift managed services include OpenShift dedicated, uh, you know, OpenShift, uh, 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 Red Hat um, OpenShift on AWS, or Rosa, uh, Azure Red Hat OpenShift or ARO or ARO, uh, and then uh, as well as OpenShift on IBM Cloud and, uh, and Google Cloud. Um, um, in addition, uh, you have uh, self-managed uh, uh, products from Red Hat. This includes OpenShift Platform Plus, which I will talk, uh, will touch upon briefly on the next slide. The OpenShift Container Platform, OpenShift Kubernetes Engine, uh, as well as uh, uh, other self-managed software offerings. Uh, you can choose the model that best suits you uh, and your needs, or a combination of all of them. Obviously. Uh, you know, it is for OpenShift, what we call anywhere, anyways, and any uh, at any time. Um, you are all probably already familiar with this, um, you know, block diagram, if you will, or a rendition of what makes or constitutes Red Hat OpenShift. 
Uh, as a quick recap, uh, OpenShift platform, uh, container platform is Red Hat's distribution of Kubernetes uh, built on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux core OS that also includes many platform developer and uh, data tools and services. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, uh, especially over the past year, and we certainly anticipate more next year, uh, enterprises and organizations need to deploy and manage applications and clusters in a multi-cluster and um, hybrid uh, cloud uh, environment. Uh, they need to answer new questions in this context. How do I deploy applications across multiple clusters uh, and clouds? Uh, how do I monitor um, these applications as well as these clusters and drive updates and upgrades? Um, are my images free from uh, vulnerabilities? And how do I ensure a secure supply chain? Um, you know, how do I uh, store images for connected and disconnected users? Uh, how can I integrate security uh, into my entire um, uh, dev process uh, from conception to production? The OpenShift Platform Plus, which is something that we introduced earlier this year in the first quarter of 2021, uh, is uh, uh, comes to the answer, if you will, uh, and uh, includes, uh, along with OpenShift Container Platform, uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security, Red Hat Quay, uh, integrated and tested together to address your management security governance, uh, registry needs and and more. Uh, so we'll discuss that uh, in, a, in a separate section later. Uh, as you all know, Red Hat is an open source company, and everything we do is upstream first in the um, in open communities of innovation. Uh, OpenShift Platform Plus and its component parts are all made of these uh, fantastic upstream communities shown here. Uh, definitely very colorful. Uh, to say the least. Uh, on behalf of the entire product team, I wanted to acknowledge uh, the work, the many contributions that uh, come to us uh, by the way of these communities and say thank you. Uh, as we look towards the year 2022 and beyond, uh, our mission is to enable our customers uh, to accelerate uh, the deployment of applications uh, in hybrid clouds and hybrid cloud environments that includes obviously multiple clusters uh, through a rich services-based experience that we are calling the hybrid cloud experience. Uh, you will see this hybrid cloud experience come to you through, you already see this in cloud.redhat.com, but more is coming. And a lot of this um, roadmap that you will see is in support of that. Uh, this hybrid cloud experience is comprised of three themes. Uh, uh, unified experience, uh, here you'll see on the right, is the first of them uh, is the best of breed, uh, brings you best of breed uniformity of experience for application developers, DevOps engineers, data scientists, data engineers, machine learning engineers, and of course, admins uh, and operations folks that span uh, the hybrid world end to end. Uh, security Everywhere is the second theme. Uh, which offers tooling and capabilities to ensure applications run securely and uh, from conception to production and users interact in a compliant manner uh, with, uh, with become in compliance with uh, internal industry standards. Uh, platform consistency uh, it provides a platform that tastes, smells, sounds, and feels uh, the same while also providing a rich, uh, no matter what the a hybrid cloud footprint is, uh, and also provides a rich ecosystem of products and technologies, not only from Red Hat, but also from our uh, very strong ISVN partner ecosystem that uh, enables users and gives them the choice to customize and get the best of breed that suits their particular need, no matter uh, what the cloud uh, or uh, all the way to the edge. Uh, we have three miller, uh, pillars of execution. Uh, that you see also here in the center uh, in the context uh, and we do that in this context of the hybrid cloud experience and the three themes that i talked earlier you'll find that the rest of the presentation are organized along these uh, uh, three pillars and these three themes the first of these pillars here on the left is the core platform and developer tools pillar which includes our investments in kubernetes uh, linux uh, and platform and developer tools while we know that we have added a lot of innovation over the years, four, five, maybe even more if you consider Linux, 
for the past 15 to 20 years. Um, uh, you know, or the, uh, you know, this innovation is not slowing down. There's more con uh, coming in response to new hardware accelerators, be it because of new specialized workloads, which new new kinds of scheduling, be it because of innovations in networking, including network observability, uh, GitOps and DevOps, and exciting new things for developers with regards to serverless and service mesh uh, and IDE experiences with code ready. Uh, these pillars are foundational to our other two pillars, which are managed cloud services and telco and edge pillars. The telco and edge pillar is in service of rapid innovation and needs from the 5G core and 5G RAN in the telco industry. Uh, we already have seen major customer wins and adoptions in these uh, markets and will continue to do so. So obviously, they, this segment needs a lot of innovation. These include their desire to run developers uh, develop and run container native uh, network functions or AI and machine learning applications developed at the core and deployed at the edge uh, with containers and on a 5G footprint. Or uh, this could also include collection of data at the edge and anonymizing it and then cleaning it and then uh, you know feeding it back into the core or acting upon that real-time data. Um, the managed cloud services pillar uh, is the third pillar, and this is all about bringing OpenShift and application services from Red Hat and partners as a fully managed and SRE-backed service uh, on the cloud of your choice. Uh, this includes ROSA and ARO uh, and OpenShift Dedicated that I touched upon earlier, but also includes application services uh, brought to you uh, with SRE-backed um, uh, services uh, on top, uh, such as API management, a stream service with Kafka, uh, Red Hat OpenShift Data Science, uh, uh, subscription management, cost management, and insights, all available via cloud.redhat.com as a rich uh, web-based uh, GUI, or um, you know, also through APIs. Uh, in 2022, we'll be doubling down and introducing more innovations in this space uh, with more application data and managed services, and that informs a lot of our roadmap uh, that you'll see. Uh, as you all know, oh, I'll touch upon this very briefly. Uh, we released OpenShift, when we released OpenShift Core, we went to a rolling window life cycle. So the life cycle of a specific 4.y release was until the Y plus three release, uh, release GAs. So when OpenShift 4.8, for example, GA, OpenShift 4.5 ended live. This typically meant about 10 to 12 months of life uh, but based on feedback that we have got from customers and uh, users, uh, uh, you know, this was constraining uh, and uh, 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 to our customers and users from an operational point of view. So we heard from them and therefore we are introducing this life cycle change, uh, which includes, um, you know, uh, to our minor and uh, minor numbered releases like the 4.y releases for example um, and uh, what it is the highlights really are uh, we are changing from our current version based life cycle policy to a time based uh, life cycle of 18 months for all minor releases of openshift code this change will take effect with uh, red hat openshift container platform 4.7 and higher and um, uh, this also means that, and also uh, we are designating even number releases as EOSs, so uh, that way we can provide you a rich US to US upgrade experience between these even number releases. Um, you know, so so those are, and then finally, I think the three OCP releases per year uh, is in cadence with the upstream Kubernetes, which is also going three to three releases per year. So what this all means is that this is the roadmap in a nutshell, like a one uh, uh, one slide, a nutshell of everything. We are, I'm not going to go through each one of these, obviously, but we'll cover some of these throughout the rest of the presentation. Uh, we continue to innovate and in, uh, exciting new capabilities across the code platform, uh, application, developer, and managed services or uh, pillars, as you can see here, through uh, calendar year 2022 and beyond. Um, OpenShift 4.10 will GA in Q1 of 2022, uh, followed by 4.11, uh, that is uh, uh, in early Q3 2022, uh, and 4.12 will be the last release this year. Uh, you can find details of these features and much more, as I said earlier, in the appendix of this presentation. With that said, uh, and with this introduction, I'll hand it over to Scott Burns to take us through the hybrid cloud and OpenShift platform.
Hey, thank you, Tushar, and hello, world. I appreciate everybody for joining today. I'm thrilled to be talking to you about the OpenShift Platform Plus and really it's Red Hat's hybrid cloud experience. You can hit the next slide, Tushar. So one of the things that we've really started to notice with our customers is that there's more of a concern for the regionality of your, your hub and this concept of a hub being the central point of management. When you start to see the clusters proliferating like cats and cattle out there, you start to have the story of management already at, at everybody's first breath. And when, when you get to that point where the management becomes key here and the proliferation of clusters, we really start to think about the hub cluster as the unit uh, where you start to manage all these different bits and pieces. And from there, you can see we're building in concepts for OpenShift Platform Plus with capabilities around ACM and ACS and Quay. We're seeing HyperShift, which is a new deployment pattern, a new way to manage the control planes for how you deploy those OpenShift clusters. And all of that really represents a shift in the thinking that we're seeing. And this is not just one and two customers, but this is across the board. We're all looking for that infrastructure to be managed, automated. We want our operations teams to be sleek and working on a fleet capability. We're just, we're just at that point where you can't have one and two clusters anymore. You even have clusters that are being chiseled out and defined for specific applications and specific workloads to run on that, that shaped cluster. Those could be clusters from the central data center all through the edge tiers and beyond. Let's hit the next slide. So really hold on to that thought as you standardize in this space with one club or multiple hubs, you start to see how from your first cluster to the hundredth or the thousandth cluster, you really need the consistency of networking, you need the consistency of storage and tooling, ingress, egress, container registries, everything that we have built in our hybrid cloud and OpenShift Platform Plus model speaks to the user that has the frustration and the concerns and the challenges about managing this new environment, about making sure that the east-west traffic is, is tunneled correctly from cluster A to cluster B, ensuring your ingress and egress are all managed consistently. So what you see on this slide really represents our point of view for how your operations teams and how your developers can start to interact with this platform in a way that's consistent and provides the ability to go from one cluster to the next without a huge headache of disruptions in between. So with that, we really start to talk about the center point of management Kubernetes space, and that's Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes. You're gonna see these three themes throughout this deck, and we hope that helps you anchor in and define the, the important points that we're delivering with each product area so that it's a cohesive picture and, and how, as we deliver this as a Red Hat portfolio. So the unified experience that we're talking about here with ACM is a single console experience, whether that's an OpenShift console or an ACM console, we want that to look and feel as one. And that's a consistent delivery in the on-premise model or up into the cloud. So as I navigate the, the, the managed cluster, my, my fleet of clusters from one to a thousand, I don't have these jarring experiences from one tab into the next tab. I want to be able to flow into those consoles and see the metrics and see the data and see the applications as if it's been unified, which is what we're going for here. We think that ultimately reduces the total cost of ownership. It reduces the headache on skills and upskilling and different tools that you need in that space as we really bring the unification of these uh, OpenShift Platform Plus capabilities into your teams. Security everywhere, that is such an important facet of the entire package here, making sure that your supply chain is secured from the beginning to the end of that application delivery, we're bringing cosign manifests and looking at secret management as areas that are huge headaches for our customers, especially in the GitOps model, where they want to be able to deploy those workloads out consistently across clouds. Again, on premise with bare metal or up in the clouds with uh, any of your, your favorite public providers. We think that reduces your exposure and risk. Obviously, those are huge headaches for security teams to take on. And we also recognize that the reduction of exposure and risk lowers your cost as well. There's less of that excitement for your company to be in the headline because of something that got out where it wasn't supposed to. Third, we look at the platform consistently, consistency, and we think this is a really key pillar for increasing developer productivity as well as lowering your cost as well. When you look at the deployment models of a single node OpenShift out to the edge, you look at compact and multi-node, remote worker nodes, even hyper-shifted clusters that are coming in, and hierarchical tiers of management hubs, you really start to understand that no matter where you are, 
OpenShift has a distribution that's consistent for you on any cloud anywhere on the planet, and we think that's the best place to be. Reduction of your complexity in the distribution allows you to deliver applications consistently anywhere that you want them to be. Let's hit that next slide. When you look at this story about applications and workloads and how they're going to run consistently everywhere, you obviously need a, a, a networking layer that can speak to that. And our multi-cluster gateway for ingress and egress really points to the unified handling of that traffic. Again, regardless of where you're at, you can see Metal LB and HA proxy, Istio ingress at various different layers of that uh, traffic gateway. So as you funnel through this, this, uh, this map, you understand the inbound traffic coming from the internet, and as it flows through these different protocols, you shouldn't have to care about how that workload needs to be architected this way or that way. We want to handle that for you. So eliminating the risk and challenges around different protocols and ensuring that there's a uniformity in that flow of traffic. You can see how we're aligning these layers so that you can take some of that thought off and put that more toward what you're interested in, which is innovating with your applications. It's not just that there has to be one single point of view. We want to encourage all of these network capabilities in the box. And you'll see there we highlight the submariner capability with that VPN tunnel connecting clusters, uh, across clusters in the east-west scenario. So all of this is, is being built and packaged into OpenShift Platform Plus ensuring that you have the ability to, to, option, uh, to automate and, uh, and, and uh, deliver the operations uh, for your workloads. Let's hit the next slide, please. And to round this out, it really starts to make the most sense that we bring storage into this picture. It's not just an afterthought. It's something that you bring in on the day one experience. It's something that you plan for and you work around. So we're really unifying this, this experience as well to bring the storage capabilities like CSI migration from the entry, uh, a couple of other key features around security everywhere with the Kerberos mounts and secret stores. And finally, looking at platform consistency with CSI ephemeral volumes. This is ensuring that ODF and its storage counterpart, OpenShift Storage, are really providing the asynchronous capabilities that you're looking for without having to target separate uh, storage uh, capabilities that you bring into this situation. So doing things like DR operators, you're bringing failover and failback operations to reduce your downtime, easing that disaster recovery scenario and ensuring this consistent data foundation capabilities everywhere you go. We're all about increasing developer and admin productivity, reducing again the risk of disruptions through your, your business continuity and reducing your total cost of ownership by standardizing storage across your fleet. Of course, the OpenShift storage is available across clouds. You'll, you'll find the CSI available in any of your popular clouds. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Jamie Scott, who's going to run you through some of the what's next features in the advanced cluster security for Kubernetes. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. And in our path to enable you to secure and manage your first and your hundredth cluster, OpenShift Platform Plus really brings together a few bundled service offerings. It brings together advanced cluster management, as Scott just described, but it also brings together advanced cluster security for Kubernetes, which came from the StackRox acquisition, and Quay as well, in an attempt to help you to enable your first and hundredth cluster in a secure and compliant manner. So through that, advanced cluster security is going to focus the next year or so on bringing you a more unified experience. What that means is we want to break down cross-functional barriers to help you reduce cost. So we're going to do that by accelerating operationalization with managed services. This will help enterprise teams decrease the swim lanes within their organization and accelerate that operationalization by being able to manage it unilaterally within their own team. We also are looking to improve feedback loops between development and security teams so that they can share the same language as they work to communicate and secure application workload. And we want to do this by improving network policy and how it's managed across clusters and through security assessments over time. We're also looking at how we enable security everywhere more effectively. We want to do that because ultimately Kubernetes is new to a lot of people still, especially to security teams. 
So we want to enable teams to innovate with competence by helping them to bridge the skill gap between a security professional who lived in the Kubernetes space and someone who might not necessarily have that skill set. And we want to do that by identifying different risk indicators across expanded use cases and by also enabling teams to remediate issues more effectively by giving them the information they need at their fingertips in order to fix issues versus just identifying the issues itself. We also want to establish additional platform consistency with the information across the portfolio. And we're going to do that by providing consistent security data across use cases and across different panes of glass throughout the OpenShift and Kubernetes ecosystem. And we want to do this in a way that enables teams to scale their policy workflows in a repeatable manner so that they can establish guardrails in order to innovate with confidence and reduce the complexity to focus their resources within their organization. And this will enable us to create and evolve a Kubernetes native security platform that helps teams to build across the entire life cycle of an application through build, deploy, and run as they seek to secure their supply chain, secure their workloads, and secure the infrastructure that's being deployed on Kubernetes. We do this through a policy engine and an API that works to establish feedback loops that are continuous throughout application development life cycles using tools that security teams and development teams use natively, such as PagerDuty and Slack, or a SIM such as Splunk, Sumo Logic, or QRadar. And we enable you to do this across public cloud, private cloud, and multi-cluster in our attempt to enable you to secure your first and hundredth cluster. But further, next slide, please. Skip over that one, too. We further, we further want to enable you to have a unified experience with Red Hat Quay as well. And we're going to do that by establishing visual consistency across a new user interface with a different look and feel that familiarizes yourself with the OpenShift console. But we're also going to be working to integrate with Quay.io and console.redhat.io so that users can log into console.redhat and get that experience with Quay that you're used to with Quay.io, but also to take advantage of different forms of pricing so that you can use your existing purchase orders using SKUs that you've paid up front for a year, or use pay-as-you-go pricing with a credit card through console.redhat.com. And this is going to enable a, a more consistent user experience from a self-managed environment to a hosted environment. We also want to establish security everywhere with Quay as well. And we're going to do that by expanding the scanning coverage beyond container basing. And we're going to do that by looking into establishing language level support for languages such as Java and Golang packages. And as you've heard, Red Hat's making a significant investment in Cosign in order to trust and verify signatures. And Quay will also be looking to support Cosign based image signature attestation so that you can verify image provenance and sign up signature identities directly within the registry, even before an application workload goes into production. And finally, we're looking to establish better platform consistency. With a global deployment model reaching all the way from the core data center, cloud regions, and the far edge, users with Quay are finding that they need a suitable content distribution for Kubernetes. And Quay helps you to reduce single central registry instance that are, you're using with Geo, is looking to do that with geo-replication. It also is helping you to provide a consistent consumption experience through pull-through caching of external registries so that you can use Quay with external registries proxied as well. And this will enable a hybrid comfort content distribution model across the enterprise. Next slide, please. So we're also making significant investments in establishing workload observability. We want to do that by simplifying the hybrid observability model. So we're looking to have an integrated cloud observability tool set to help you bridge the self-managed and cloud-managed workload solution. And we're looking to do this by establishing 
workload monitoring and user-defined projects to monitor flexible hybrid workloads and applications. This will help teams to optimize consoles between hybrid environments. We're also looking to establish additional observability for the how the consistent information is stored. The Red Hat's going to provide the necessary tooling to ensure observability can be delivered across multiple environments. And we're going to do that by improving Thanos and Prometheus support to extend write for storage and platform monitoring of OpenShift workloads. And this will help you establish longer term trends and ingest metrics. Finally, we're looking to establish visual flexibility within our platform. And we're going to do this by providing one choice, one provider from the data center through your edge tiers for observability. So we want to extend the platforms and locations that you can use the existing dashboards within the OpenShift console and export observability metrics and log metrics. We're going to do this by optimizing an API experience in the OpenShift console. Next slide. And finally, to round out our investment in observability, we're also looking to help users observe network traffic more effectively. So whether you're in one cluster or 100 clusters, developers and cluster administrators are always going to need seamless application connectivity. But they're also going to need to troubleshoot when that connectivity isn't seamless. So we're looking to give you the information on network traffic metrics and tracing in order to perform that troubleshoot. We're also looking to help teams meet their security and regulatory compliance obligation by helping give them the traffic that they need in and around their networks so that they can establish some network policy and governance and use the necessary tools to ensure code is secured across all of their environments. And finally, we want to provide additional platform consistency. And we're going to do that by allowing developers and administrators to require a common understanding of their traffic within and across multiple cluster boundaries. We're going to do that by establishing a topology for users to understand and share a viewpoint on network traffic flow and visualization. Next slide. And for those of you who aren't familiar with HyperShift, HyperShift really brings the externalized control plane to OpenShift in a multi-cluster environment. HyperShift is a middleware for hosting OpenShift control planes at scale, and it solves the problem of cost and time to revision multiple clusters as a means of portably cross implementing cross-cloud workflows. So HyperShift is going to come and give you a fleet level provisioning view for your clusters in a way that gives you a myriad of benefits. And these benefits range from low CapEx and OpEx to faster cluster bootstrapping, and to use heterogeneous architecture clusters, such as using a cluster in x86, ARM, or IBM Z type of architecture. This allows you to manage these clusters in a way that has network segmentation and trust established throughout the environment. And with that, I really want to hand it over to Deepthi to walk through our telco and ad strategy. Thank you. So uh, built on top of Enterprise OpenShift, these are some of the enhancements we've undertaken specifically to support telco and edge workloads on the platform. So telco workloads require high performance, low latency computing. And in order to achieve that, workloads need absolute resource guarantee to enable predictable performance. We have been working on PAO, the performance add-on operator, and the topology of our scheduler, to name a few and we want to achieve optimal resource utilization with enhanced performance on this platform through this. Today, if you look at typical networks, we have dedicated appliances, we have virtualized 4G workloads, and now we have 5G workloads running in containers. Running telco workloads as microservices has its added benefits. That includes continuous CI, uh, upgrading seamlessly various parts of network without breaking anything. Now, what we're trying to do is to simplify network operations and management by making it practical to run all of telco workloads on a common platform. We do have the CNF certification process in place to ease the move. Finally, we've always looked to enable next generation hardware, be it CPUs, NICs, smart NICs, GPUs, to facilitate an agile infrastructure with latest and efficient hardware. Next slide, please. So as we know, 
telco uh, workloads need coherent and predictable resource alignment. It's more like having CPU, memory, and devices, all the resources that are assigned to your pod belonging to the same NUMA node. And without this alignment, we're cognizant of the high performance penalty that one could see. So we have tried to address this with Topology Manager earlier, which works very well aligning resources at a node level once the pod is scheduled on the node. But given that the Kubernetes scheduler itself is not aware of any topology, this can often lead to runaway pod creation when NUMA alignment constraints are not taken into account while scheduling. So we've been working with upstream communities to enhance the Kubernetes scheduler to make intelligent NUMA aware placement decisions to optimize performance specifically for telco. The first implementation of NUMA aware scheduler is based on the upstream RTE or the resource topology exporter component. And we will be switching to node feature discovery project in the near future. With topology aware scheduling enabled, workloads should never be placed on platforms that cannot meet their resource needs aligned to their topology preferences. Next slide, please. We've always looked to support bleeding edge networking hardware or accelerators uh, on the platform. With coming to 5G, this becomes even more essential and critical. With OVN hardware offload, we're looking to offload all of the data plane traffic flows and services to the NIC FPGAs. Doing this can benefit telco NFE customers who can now have high performance data planes with improved networking services. With smart NICs, one can look to isolate the control plane onto a separate cluster just for running infrastructure services, say like running on ARM cores in the NIC, while the tenant workloads continue to run on the nodes. This provides managed accelerated infrastructure services that includes networking, storage, AI, ML outside of the tenant cluster. Finally, with support for latest hardware accelerators, be like programmable FPGAs, crypto engines, or GPUs, all managed by OpenShift operators, we're looking to accelerate the 5G code and RAN functions like inline encryption, data plane encapsulation, so on and so forth. Next slide, please. So we come into, uh, so now we get into the RAN. RAN is on the edge of the network. It's a crucial connection point between the end user devices and the rest of the operator's network. With the current ongoing 5G network transformation, one is increasingly seeing container-based cloud-native solutions for RAN. It is very important that we simplify the network operations, improve the stability, availability, efficiency, all while serving increasing number of devices with high bandwidth applications. As it is on the edge, it is very essential to have a very small footprint, optimized infrastructure, but with very, very good performance to meet 5G requirements. We do have a single node OpenShift that fits the bill right here. And given that we're going to deploy hundreds and thousands of sites with hundreds and thousands of such devices, it is essential to deploy, manage, upgrade this in an automated way at scale to advance cluster management and zero touch provisioning. All of these DUs that typically handle um, antenna coverage do a ton of calculation in real time. And we tune the nodes that run RAN real time workloads to leverage advanced timing and support hardware accelerators on the platform to achieve such high performance. Next slide, please. The ZDP, the zero touch provisioning, is a way to dis, uh, deploy OpenShift clusters at scale in an automated way via ACM, right? It uses declarative GitOps approach, bootstraps in place to deploy OpenShift on new compact topologies. We're continuously looking to evolve and enhance this specifically for the edge. Uh, we're looking to uh, you know, enhance this on a scale level. We're looking to support more than 2K SNO provisioned and managed by a single instance of ACM very soon. Enabling policy-based upgrades by defining groups of SNOs that can be upgraded independent uh, you know, of each other for more granular multi-cluster management. Ideally going forward, we would like to ZTP everything. That's right, ZTP everything, the DUs, the CRAN hubs, the additional infrastructure that is needed, which all would make our life easier to deploy, manage, and upgrade clusters at the edge with ease and, and scale. Next slide. The challenge with the 5G network is to provide ultra-reliable, high-accurate timing synchronization over the 5G packet network. The answer to this is the precision time protocol. And this is the reason we have invested in enhancing this and making it more robust in the coming days. Given that we already have a single NIC ordinary clock, boundary clock, and event bus for PTP events, we're now looking to build on top of these enhancements for PTP stack and also the PTP operator on OpenShift. We're looking to enhance precision time control. Uh, we're also for scaling to more number of RUs, 
uh, building HA by having rigid policies on how the system clock is set with best master selection, CMP support. And we're also looking to upgrade to Linux PTP 3.1 stack, which has much more richer features, improved algorithms, and robustness and enhancements. And we're also looking to support the grand master clock via the NIC. This would highly reduce the cost at the cell side by moving this functionality from the cell side router to the node. For those who are interested, we have a detailed roadmap of this um, later in the later part of the deck. Next slide, please. We're increasingly realizing RAND functions over generic off the shore servers with open source software. As a part of the next phase, we're looking to see how we can optimize these nodes for power savings without any performance penalty. At the end of the day, we do not want the nodes to consume any more power than that is necessary. So given that many telecom vendors run thousands of these far edge GUs, power getting expensive, especially at the far edge, every little bit of power savings on the node directly translates to huge dollar savings. So we're working up the stack right from the hardware to the operating system, OpenShift, and finding the workloads themselves to enable power saving profiles or knobs with the end goal that all of this working together coherently will result in no wastage of power, especially at the edge. Next slide, please. Um, it's over to Managed Services. Thank you. Hey, Deepti, thank you. Uh, hopefully video and audio is coming across. Uh, Tushar, next slide, please. So just uh, I just want to level set just a bit about what I'm going to be specifically talking about with relating to uh, managed OpenShift. Uh, I know Tushar touched upon that much earlier on in the presentation, but as we're all aware, right, everyone knows about OpenShift, OpenShift Container Platform, right? This is where you basically, you know, buy a subscription, you take the bits, right, take it home with you or into your data center or cloud of choice, install it, and, um, you know, you basically are uh, doing a lot of the day one and some of, like, the day two operations as well. But we're going to be specifically talking about over on the left-hand uh, side of the slide, um, about the managed OpenShift offerings that we bring, more of like an OpenShift as a service. We do have some uh, partnerships with uh, the large cloud providers where we provide a first-party native service that's available on the platform where really the entirety is available on um, on your platform of choice. So we do have with AWS the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or what we like to call Rosa. Or uh, similarly with Azure, with Azure Red Hat OpenShift, early on IBM Cloud as well with Red Hat OpenShift on IBM Cloud. And we also have a Red Hat offering uh, that gives you a choice of cloud provider, and that is Red Hat OpenShift dedicated. So you can choose between running it on GCP or uh, AWS. And uh, just some of the next things we're going to go through are specifically relating to, uh, to these offerings. Um, so next slide, please. So here is a uh, familiar uh, theme that we've kind of been going through. So one of the things that we're looking at is really just to give our users a unified experience in how they work with their managed OpenShift clusters. So this is really giving them one single point of location where they're going to be able to uh, deploy their clusters, you know, manage their clusters, delete their clusters, um, rather than having to have disparate uh, areas depending on the service that they're using. So this will be able to give them more of an ability to work from one location rather than kind of keeping track where their clusters are and really kind of enhancing that hybrid uh, experience. So allowing them to go to OpenShift Cluster Manager in order to be able to deploy their cluster or, you know, modify their cluster uh, in, in any way. Currently, what's available now is we do have OpenShift dedicated that is available from there. We're very close to getting uh, Rosa to be uh, available uh, through that as well. Um, and hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll get uh, ARO there also. Uh, I am happy to announce though that also with uh, ARO just this week, we've uh, enabled a UI experience through the Azure console uh, as well. So as we are uh, kind of going through this where we're making, you know, slow but steady strides and being able to uh, further enhance our, our customers' experiences with uh, managed OpenShift. Um, talking about security, right, and um, everyone is interested in, in, in this regard. So, but here we're, um, you know, we're making further strides in achieving further compliance with industry-leading certifications. So one of the big ones that are uh, that is ahead is uh, HIPAA that we're working towards, uh, PCI compliance we've actually already hit, and we also are working towards other government certifications such as uh, FedRAMP High. Um, we are looking this probably in the you know, earlier uh, half of uh, 2022, um, but really giving our customers just more flexibility in the kind of workloads that we can accept 
and really still kind of feeding into that hybrid cloud model whereby uh, they can come to us for one location for OpenShift in order to uh, put their workloads are regardless of what those workloads really become. And with a platform consistency, right, what we're, this is more about kind of, I guess, like a, a, a mentality that our, uh, that our team has kind of taken on. Um, and that should really be that, you know, if it works on OpenShift, on uh, OCP, then it should work on managed OpenShift as well. Obviously, there might be certain things where, you know, that may not be feasible, but it really the, the approach is going to be and is that, you know, it should be initially at least treated as a bug if it doesn't work on managed OpenShift, but it does on uh, OCP. So really just kind of, you know, ensuring further that, you know, OpenShift is OpenShift. It's going to work like you expect it to work. Uh, regardless of how you are uh, opting to consume it. Next slide, please. Furthermore, we're working on just expanding the choices that our customers have. So again, in, in expanding their flexibility to um, you know, choose whatever workloads that best fits for their use cases. Uh, so expanding the options that they have in terms of the uh, worker nodes or kinds of worker nodes that they're gonna be using. So things like spot instances, which is actually already available, but working on things, let's say, like GPU instances or AMD, um, things like wavelength or dedicated uh, instances as well, and just really, you know, offering those to be able to just meet the customer where they are with the kind of workloads that they want to be running. Further on the security front, um, we've actually initiated this too already. So just supporting uh, bring your own keys for KMS for the uh, cluster encryption. This has been something that we've heard from our customers uh, repeatedly that they've wanted to see. So before it was encrypted as well, but we would create the key for you. But now at cluster creation time, you're able to specify uh, your KMS key and that will be used during the uh, creation of the uh, cluster. Um, and then lastly, with uh, the platform efficiency, right? One of the things still we, we keep hearing is that our customers just wanna pay for what they use, right? And going along with this, is that sometimes our customers might be using, you know, might not be using their clusters maybe over like the weekend or if it's an extended weekend, you know, like we just had here in the US, um, you know, they may not be using their cluster. So they want the ability to pause it or hibernate. So this is something that uh, will be uh, coming out hopefully in the near term, uh, whereby the customers will be able to uh, pause their clusters. Uh, and that'll be also both a pause on the infrastructure costs as well as the OpenShift subscription costs that are on top of that. So this way they'll only be able to truly pay for their consumption as they are using it. Next slide, please. So what I'd like to call uh, attention to is, so the, those are just some of the things that, that we went through. There are more details down in the appendix, but I'd actually invite you to come and actually take a look at our roadmap that we have. We have this published uh, publicly uh, in GitHub. Uh, there are the three relevant links uh, at the top. So I encourage you to come and you know take a look, see what new features are uh, being added, right? How it's progressing through the pipeline and you know watch what is uh, you know what has already been uh, GA. Uh, next slide, please. And along those lines, if you do have other ideas that you'd like to see that you haven't seen yet, is just to please get in touch with us. You can use the same mechanism to actually just open up uh, an RFE or a request, um, and you know maybe you know we'll get in touch with you to find some more information, and maybe you'll see it on a future roadmap. So uh, that is it, and I'll turn it over to uh, Karina and Gorov to talk to us about platform and developer tools. Hi, right, thank you. Uh, uh, I'll be joining with my colleague Karina to talk, uh, to cover the session. Uh, core platform and developer tools. These are essentially the fundamental features and capabilities that make the whole platform uh, faster, better, secure, and uh, easy to use. Next slide. Uh, installation. So uh, with each releases, we try to uh, integrate the OpenShift via uh, to a cloud provider so that you can use, uh, uh, you can deploy OpenShift on the provider of your choice. Uh, in near future, we'll be integrating with uh, Alibaba Cloud, Azure Stack, IBM Cloud, and Nutanix. Uh, we're looking forward for a simplified onboarding of the installation by giving you a bootable media that you can boot your cluster zero uh, uh, as soon as possible. Or even better, you can uh, have all OpenShift installed from a factory and ship it to your data center. 
we're trying to mitigate, mitigate risk uh, during upgrade. Uh, example, starting for 10, use upgrade requires, will require single worker reboot. Uh, zone aware, awareness during upgrade, that means if you have a fault domain, a multi and OpenShift deploy, uh, deployed in different fault domains, then the upgrade will complete in one fault domain before moving to another. Uh, targeted upgraded blocking is uh, if you think a release has a critical bugs that is uh, pertaining to a particular environment that you're using, then we give you the flexibility and freedom to skip those releases. Next slide. Compute. So we will be uh, going forward, going to support uh, ARM in OpenShift. Uh, when you when you you will deploy the OpenShift in a cloud provider of your choice, then we'll give you the flexibility to use their cloud native services like TMS, DNS, load balancer. We'll provide improved lifecycle management of certificates through Certificate Manager. To enhance the experience and to decrease the operational cost, uh, we are looking forward to provide self-driving control plane that will have automatic scaling and automated backups. Previously, uh, our cost was a black box. Now we'll provide you the capability to, uh, uh, to customize the R cost uh, based on your business need. Next slide, please. Uh, operators. So operator is an easy way to install or uh, install your application in OpenShift. So while installing the whole OpenShift, we will provide you the capability to skip certain operators that you don't want to get installed. We'll provide the functionality to provide uh, automatic failure recovery of those operators. Specialized uh, schedulers. So we'll provide you a, a easy way to install your new schedulers on top of OpenShift so that you can deploy your AIML or HPC type of workload on top of OpenShift. For customers who wants to deploy uh, OpenShift on an air gap environment, we provide a functionality called Disconnected. Now with the Disconnected, you could have an easy OC mirror-like functionality to install the whole OpenShift in that environment. Next. Uh, advanced host networking in OpenShift bare metal. So we'll provide the functionality like bonds, VLAN, static IPs. Uh, in fact, you, uh, DSCP is no longer a requirement. You can put a static IP and, and stand up uh, uh, your OpenShift on bare metal. Hybrid clusters. Now you can run VM and uh, bare metal next to each other. Um, take a scenario where you're, uh, you're, control, you're, you're running a control pane on a VM and, a bare mat, and the worker node is on the bare metal. We'll provide a faster uh, a booting mechanism, uh, like you, you'll have external bootable media, which will help you to boot your cluster zero up and running with no time. Next slide, please. So CATA containers. So with, with the GA of CATA containers, uh, we'll provide the health matrix functionality. We'll provide node feature discovery so that uh, it will let you know before even installing the CATA containers that if the environment is suitable to install the CATA container or not. We'll provide the integration uh, with ACS so that you can have a tighter runtime control. And uh, we'll provide the integration with uh, SRIV and DPDK so that uh, you can run the application which require uh, uh, high throughput, low latency uh, type of workload in a secure containers. Next slide. Uh, window updates. So uh, uh, we'll be going forward discontinuing the support of Dockers and Windows and we'll be migrating towards container D and we'll be uh, using uh, CSI for storages. Uh, uh, we'll be providing health management of Windows Note uh, and provide the capability of, uh, of self-healing capability uh, in the Windows Note. Next slide. And the next presenter, Karina. Thanks, Gaurav. All right. To further round out 
Hotspot's hybrid and multi-cloud experience are key enhancements to the user experience. Soon you'll see the OpenShift Platform Plus Unified Console experience come together. And first will be the integration of OpenShift Container Platform and Advanced Cluster Management into a unified console experience. And this provides a managed manage cluster intelligence to your entire fleet. So what that means is you'll easily be able to switch contacts between your fleet view to a single cluster, um, and it'll drive more users into your multi-cluster management hub. Uh, next, we will integrate uh, advanced cluster uh, security, Red Hat Quay, log management, and more into this unified console experience. And our goal is to provide a deeper insight into your fleet, um, about your fleet into this new unified console experience. And also, we have the advent of dynamic plugins. Not only will we create a rich user experience for your users and our users, but soon customers and partners will be able to build their own experience into the console. And some examples of these dynamic plugins uh, you'll be able to use are the multi-cluster overview, um, cluster inventory, cluster creation wizard, and a cluster selector. Next slide, please. OpenShift GitOps. We see small and large customers increasingly making use of Git workflows uh, for declaratively driving your cluster and application operations. And compliance is also gaining attention from customers due to uh, the challenges they face with running multiple clusters across multiple clouds. OpenShift GitOps uh, enables customers to get started with your GitOps workflows and configure your clusters and del deliver your applications declaratively. And as your requirements grow, advanced cluster management, advanced cluster security, and Ansible provide a solid foundation for extending your GitOps workflows into a wide variety of use cases, uh, including supply chain security, edge deployments, uh, your cluster lifecycle management and compliance, uh, policy management, um, as well as AIML workloads through ML Ops. Next slide, please. OpenShift CI/CD and GitOps. We're working towards a consistent GitOps-based workflow to not only deliver applications, but also manage and drive your CI pipelines directly from Git. Uh, this also includes additional capabilities such as approval processes and pipelines concerns concurrency control uh, to be driven directly from the Git repo. Um, your OpenShift GitOps uh, focuses on enhancing your GitOps workflows uh, for customers that are also using Helm charts. Uh, they're using Helm charts to deploy their applications. It, it'll simplify the bootstrapping and the Git getting started experience for your GitOps workflows with Argo CD. Also talking about security, uh, your supply chain security and application delivery, it's such a hot topic right now, and rightfully so. It is a top of mind challenge for most customers, and uh, it is a key area of focus for OpenShift pipelines and OpenShift GitOps. Uh, you'll see, um, be able to enable variable builds uh, by signing and verifying uh, your Tecton pipelines. And also that'll be expanded to image signing, um, which will be incrementally introduced in the upcoming quarters. Um, also, HashiCorp Vault Secret Manager. You'll see integrations with that, as well as uh, more guidance on other secret managers with OpenShift GitOps. Um, Next slide, please. OpenShift Serverless. To enhance the OpenShift Serverless deployment platform, it's being further integrated into the OpenShift user experience. Um, with serverless functions, we've talked a lot about that in um, previous presentations, uh, you'll get a consistent, simplified programming model for non-traditional developers, uh, such as data scientists and content developers. And in our security focus area, Serverless will be providing end-to-end -end encryption for internal and external services, as well as support for multi-tenancy. OpenShift Serverless uh, continues to drive towards a much more consistent platform experience by offering a way to deploy stateless workloads in our managed cloud offerings, which you heard about earlier, as well as uh, providing an application-centric foundation 
uh, for the centralized hybrid and multi-cloud experience that you have also heard about today. Next slide, please. All right, OpenShift Service Mesh um, is also, it provides a well-integrated out-of-the-box service mesh that is installed and upgraded via an operator. Um, you'll see observability and visualizations with Kiali. Um, it'll automate your network and ingress configuration, and it integrates with Freescale for API management. Also, zero trust networking policies uh, for enhancing your security. This allows for the creation of your traffic policies. It's based on service identities rather than traditional IP addresses or ports. Uh, this greatly reduces your potential exposure of risk. Um, again, more consistent user experience as well across the platform. Next slide, please. OpenShift virtualization. Uh, as virtual machines are in OpenShift inherit all of the OpenShift features, we're working to enhance that experience by managing your VMs, um, and providing even more detailed statistics, aggregated views, of your VMs, and then also um, pulling in the, the data protection, integrating it with the OpenShift API um, for uh, data protection, disaster recovery, um, and that is all going to be integrated into ACM, Advanced Cluster Management. Uh, security everywhere, uh, integrations with the compliance operator, as well as um, advanced cluster security. So you'll see even tighter integrations for OpenShift virtualization across uh, OpenShift Platform Plus and the entire platform. And then also for your platform consistency, you'll see um, the ability to run the same workloads in your public cloud. You can run your VMs in OpenShift as well as on your AWS bare metal instances. That's currently tech preview, so you'll see that go GA. And then collaborating with other cloud vendors. Next slide, please. Migration toolkit. So previous slide was OpenShift virtualization. You can use um, the migration toolkits to help you migrate your uh, VMs. So one, Keep that in mind. Uh, lots of key enhancements you'll see for the migration toolkit for applications. Uh, some things you'll see are um, migration guidance. You'll see even a further um, being able to bring your legacy applications in. You'll see guidance on how you're going to do that. And it, the goal of this migration toolkit for applications is to become your ultimate open source toolkit to safely migrate and modernize your application portfolio. So bringing in your legacy applications. You'll also be able to gather more insight as you're architecting your migrations into OpenShift, your old applications into old OpenShift. So there's so many great things. Um, Look at the conveyor tackle project upstream to see what is uh, coming down the pipe. Next slide, please. And also a migration toolkit for containers. There are still uh, customers on OpenShift uh, Container Platform 3. Their migrating from 3 to 4 has never been easier. So look at the migration toolkit for containers. If you're still on three, it continues to simplify and be easier and easier. Uh, cloud migrations. You want, there are there is an increased demand for migrations to uh, ARO and Rosa, and these will be fully tested and supported by the migration toolkit for containers, regardless if you're migrating from OpenShift Container Platform 3 or 4. Also, storage in place migration. This is key for a lot of people. It'll help you migrate your existing storage into OpenShift Data Foundation with minimal disruption to your applications. Next slide, please. 
Thank you. These slides will be posted publicly, and the appendix contains more detailed roadmap information, as Tushar mentioned, for all the topics and areas we covered today. And thank you so much for joining us for this quarterly briefing from OpenShift Product Management.